George Michael and Faith, uh, you've been getting in touch after our chat about um, food and if the usual ways of delivering your food were to vanish, could Wales feed itself? Uh, this is the subject of a major conference taking place in Cardiff this week and we were chatting about that. Uh, Paul's been listening to Radio Wales in Somerset. Paul says, uh, Wales, 3 million population, England, 500 million, uh, 50 million population. We uh, import food to feed people. We should also talk about controlling the size of our UK population. Clearly, we can't grow enough food to feed an ever-increasing population. Um, Paul, thank you very much for that. I suppose the population needs to increase because of our increasing amount of older people who need looking after and younger people to generate wealth to, uh, to look after them. But thank you very much for getting in touch. It's the fifth part of our series celebrating Welsh explorers with scientist and explorer Hugh James from Blackwood. Lovely to see you, Hugh. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today, it's the turn of uh, Royal Navy Petty Officer Edgar Evans, who accompanied Scott on both of the British Antarctic expeditions of the early 1900s. Hugh, you've got a particular interest in this topic as you're working on an education project. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, we are. It it seems strange to be talking about Antarctic expeditions in this nice sunny weather. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, later on in the year, because it's... uh, well, just over a hundred years now, since Scott originally went to the uh, went to the South Pole, um, there's a uh, an expedition called Spirit of Scott going on uh, later in the year, October November time, and up until December, that will recreate Scott's steps to the South Pole because everyone who went there took slightly different courses. So uh, there's a chap called Ed Coates and Alan Chambers who are going to recreate uh, Scott's steps and be as innovative as possible but in the same kind of lines, really. And you're going to be comparing the, the original journey, the original clothes, the original food with what they might uh, might be taking today. I mean, there'll be a huge difference just in terms of the gear, presumably. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we could look, at, we could compare exactly and we could send down the, the clothes that they had with Ed and, and Alan and make them wear that kind of stuff. But Scott himself was really innovative. I mean, the stuff that he used when he went in the first place was was the best stuff at the time. So... He wouldn't want people wearing hundred-year-old clothes trying to get to the South Pole because that's that'd be just silly. Um, but we're going to run a, a massive education, an international education project on it, where kids can get involved and uh, collect data that we send back from the ice. They can collaborate. Uh, they can uh, make their own data to compare. And what we'll be doing is a lot of kind of physiology and, and medical kind of stuff because Scott himself, when when he went to the South Pole with the four other people, including Ed Grevens, they didn't actually take. Um, note of how many calories they were intaking and how much they were expending and stuff like that. So this will be the first time that someone will walk the exact same route and we can find out why it all went wrong, mm. why they didn't take enough food. And and you and, said walk. They are going to do it on foot, are they? They are, yeah, just yeah. like Scott did, yeah. Because yeah. that was one of the things that, you know, that it's talked about led to the... Uh, the, the downfall of the trip, wasn't it? That they Probably didn't so. have the dogs with them. Yeah. yeah. The explorer uh, Ranul Fiennes refers to uh, Edgar Evans as uh, as the Welsh giant. I mean, he hasn't always had a, a good and appreciative press, has he? No, this it's been it's been in the press quite a lot. In, in fact, the last couple of days it's, it's been back in the press about how he, because he was the first to die when he when they went on this Terra Nova trip, um, it was blamed on him. It was he was the first one to, to to die on the way back, and when news came back to the mainland, they said, "Oh, that's because it was him because he wasn't educated properly, because he wasn't a an educated a person, because he was uh, lower class or whatever." Uh, that's because he he couldn't withstand the the dangers of the of the the South Pole really, and they blamed the entire trip on him, and he then became a uh, he was he held everyone back really. On the, on the whole expedition. That's what people were saying at the time. But I don't necessarily myth. believe that. Let, let's start with his early years, because he came from uh, Middleton in, uh, in Rossilli on, uh, on Gower, didn't he? And, and his, his family had strong links with the area. Uh, it, it, was, it must have been in the family, because his, his father was uh, one of these famous Cape Horners. Yes, he was, yeah. And um, Edgar Evans used to sit and, and listen to these Cape Horners all the time. People would go around at the bottom of Cape Horn and bring back ore and minerals from the other side of the world. And these were the adventures of the time as, as well. So by the time he was 15, he uh, he enrolled in the Navy. And in 1899, he enrolled on the, the HMS Majestic, which was where he first met Captain, uh, Rob, well, he wasn't Captain then, but Robert Falcon Scott, who was working as a, a torpedo lieutenant. 
a mere torpedoal attempt on the uh, on the majestic. So he started to to get to know Scott, and he knew Scott for many many years. And uh, Robert Falk and Scott used to write to his later in in his life, write to his wife and say how much of a, a nice guy he was, and he used to love his anecdotes, and it was just a really um, he had this this Welsh howl, this this um, fun about him that everyone tended to love. And you like to say you, he was called the Welsh giant because he was a, a massive guy. He was he was quite a big guy. So so it was obviously that personal relationship that uh, got him the uh, got him the job, wasn't it, uh, of, of travelling with Scott? Yeah. Well, well, they went. The first big British Antarctic expedition was in 1901. It was a discovery expedition, and it lasted from 1901 to 1904. And it was the first big Antarctic expedition after Ross's, which was a good 60 years earlier. So no one had been in the Antarctic for quite a while. So they wanted to go down and do a lot of um, uh, geology, a lot of uh, cartography. They wanted to find out what was down there, a lot of zoology as well, find out what animal life was down there. Um, and the Discovery Expedition had a lot of big names on it, including Scott and including Shackleton as well. Shackleton was on that, uh, as, as well as Evans. And that went off from Cardiff. Uh, in 1901 so all the, the great expeditions go from from Cardiff I think but it didn't it wasn't exactly cheap in today's money it was around about seven and a quarter million pounds uh, worth of money and vast amount of people in Wales chipped in didn't they I mean there was this real sense of sort of um, of, of Welsh yeah. endeavour to contribute to the funds yeah it was and especially since it was going from Cardiff that one and especially the, the Terranova expedition the next one after that which was a privately funded expedition sponsored by people like uh, Oxo and Heinz and the Wellcome Trust and people like that. Um, after the original Discovery expedition then, which had a few failings, um, people said that it was a very successful expedition, but they had to send two recovery, two relief expeditions. And uh, one, one was called the Morning that had to go down to the Antarctic and bring extra provisions. And uh, they had to wait for another year because it actually got stuck in the ice. The the discovery ship so they were kind of stuck there for a while thinking um we can't really get out so <laughs> we have to have some more provisions sent down for us and do more science do more uh adventure really well we'll talk much more about the life and times of uh, the great welsh explorer edgar evans as told by uh, scientist and explorer hugh james uh, after this this is georgia ruth Never. 
Wasn't that fantastic? Recorded live at the uh, Barnabas Arts House for Radio Wales Music Day last Friday. That was the wonderful Georgia Ruth. We made some music videos of the performances on Friday, so head along to our website and you can see some videos featuring uh, Georgia Ruth, Boy, the Boy, Boy Royals, Cuba Cuba and Greta Isaac. Uh, go to bbc.co.uk slash Radio Wales and click on Radio Wales Music Day. I'm wishing now, at this great age, I hadn't so often chosen good work over money. But not really. I don't have any regrets about it, really, at all. She's performed on stage and screen. It's the only time I've been completely overcome and not being able to speak. I thought, you are doing a scene with Lawrence Olivier. Alan Jones meets Cranford star actress Dame Eileen Atkins. She said, what's the matter with you? You've stopped, Eileen. What's the matter? And Larry sort of knew and helped me out of it. A new series, Alan Jones. Listen again on the BBC Radio Wales website. It's uh, approaching 19 minutes past 11. Hugh James, scientist and explorer from Blackwoods, with us this morning, discussing uh, another of our Welsh explorers. Um, this time it is the turn of, oh, where's his name? Edgar Evans, isn't it? It is Edgar Evans. Yes, good. We, uh, what was his role uh, when he was down there? Well, he was chosen... Uh, Ed Grevens as a, well, just experience, really. He'd been on the Discovery expedition with Scott already, and he'd been on, he actually led uh, one of the, well, he was in the team of three, mm -hmm. uh, along with Scott, who went on, on like, the further south uh, project, who, it was Scott and uh, and Ed Grevens and one other, who took a sled down to, well, at that point, it was the further south that anyone had ever been on record. So it was just his experience was there. Uh, and led into the, the Terra Nova expedition then. And it didn't have like a, he wasn't massively in charge of anything on the, on the Terra Nova expedition, but the whole wealth of experience that was on that Terra Nova trip uh, was, was unreal. And he, it, like I said, it was privately financed and he was coming off the back of one of Shackleton's um, expeditions, the Nimrod expedition in 1909. And a couple of people had said that certain people going to the South Pole, the Japanese were, were going to try and go for it, uh, as well as a couple of others. And he knew that Roald Am Amundsen was going to go for it as well. So he was kind of like, and Scott said, I need to get to the, the South Pole and need to have these people around me with all the experience together. All these years on, we now know so much about um, why it failed. So what is the definitive reason as to why that trip failed? Do we, do we really know now? It's a good question. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why it did. We, we mentioned earlier that uh, one of the reasons could have been that they, they chose to, to pull their own pox instead of actually using dogs, because we know that Amundsen used, used dog sleds to get to the South Pole. And like I said, Scott was quite, quite innovative, and he wanted to take... But he used um, ponies and horses for a little bit of it, uh, motorised sleds for a bit as well, but you know they didn't really work. He did use dogs as well but only in certain bits. The, the majority of it was them pulling their own sleds, which is where uh, Ed Grevens came into his own, because like I said, he was, a, he was a big guy, and he was really strong and really fit, and could pull his sled all day, uh, mm. and would have most of, 
the provisions on board on his. So the f- the team of five that went to the South Pole and did gather on January 17th, um, on 1912. Uh, they got there about 33 days after Amundsen actually got there himself. Um, and on the way back then, about a month later, uh, at the bottom of a glacier, Ed Evans was the first one to die, and not, not long after then, the rest of them did. But myself, I kind of believe, because uh, Ed Evans was such a, a big guy, and he would have been pulling the most stuff, he would have been using his energy so much faster, and b- bigger guys have higher metabolism anyway. Uh, he had a cut on his hand that, in those conditions, wouldn't heal. He had a concussion from falling down a glacier, uh, falling down a, a crevasse, sorry. So he himself was kind of blamed for you know, not wanting to go on and just not having the, the mental fitness to go on. But really, it was his physical fitness that stopped him. And the amount of calories that they took, uh, the amount of food that they took, wouldn't have sustained them for that, that long, uh, especially after one or two of them started kind of dropping off and holding everyone up. So I think that the maybe a little bit of lack of organisation and underestimating how long and how severe the, the weather was going to be when they were there yeah and as well they were it, it, they were scientists you know it was a it was a science explora- exploration really um the other team were kind of more athletes really weren't they they were skiers they were yeah. you know I, I don't know i just get the sense that they were sort of going at it from from different sort of places and for different reasons really. yeah exactly and scott always said that you know if we don't he, can, he kind of knew that he wasn't going to reach the south pole first but then he said, look at all this stuff that we're doing. Look at all the science that we're bringing back. Yeah. The zoology, the tar- cartography, all of this stuff that we're contribu- contributing to to the rest of humankind. And then what's Amundsen doing? Hmm. He's going down there with a the pure goal to get to the South Pole first. And that's it. That's all he would do. So they were coming at it from, from different sides. And who's the most heroic? You know, the, the guy who gets the South Pole first or the one who does all this good work down there? And we, we view them now um, as as heroic, don't we? But there is all, also this subtext about the reputation of Edgar Evans as as, as the man who who let them down. I mean, how, how are those reputations made? How come that kind of story gets to be written when we know it's essentially probably not true? Well, when I first came back from the Antarctic, um, his wife of the time, Lois, and he had three children at the time as well, they would have been devastated by this whole kind of thing that he was the one to let him down. But because, you know, if if you know that uh, someone's the, the first to die and is holding everyone else up, naturally you probably blame that person. And everyone needs to blame someone. It's kind of a trait tra- tra- of humanity, really. And I guess it's the, it's the journalism of its time as well. We have to put ourselves back into the mindset of the turn of the century and that sort of class-ridden journalism of seeing this this guy who so wasn't, poorly wasn't, educated. A, wasn't a yeah. toff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you when you go in for the the South Pole and someone else gets there first, then you kind of need to come up with an excuse for not getting there. And who better to blame than an uneducated petty officer that was kind of just seen as tagged along on the trip? How should we remember him now? Well, his petitions going around uh, for a statue of him in in Swansea um, by his grandson, actually. And I think that's going to be the best way to remember him is as a hero of the time, someone who was uh, an amazing polar explorer. He was actually awarded the the polar medal uh, when he got back uh, the first time from the discovery trip. But he was an amazing polar explorer. And even though he wasn't an actual athlete, he was a really fit, big guy who could do almost anything in the poles. So one of the the five people who got to the South Pole, albeit second, uh, a, a real hero of Wales, I think. And what about the An- Antarctica for you? Do you fancy? Have you been? Do you fancy it? I haven't. Uh, I, do you know what? I think I'm going to go for the Arctic first. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to the North Pole first, and then look at look at the South Pole. But there's, there's there's lots of um, stigma around the Antarctic, and people gather in different ways now. Helen Skelton recently went there for sport relief mm-hmm. uh, by using partly bike and partly uh, kite, but supported by uh, a whole team of trucks and uh, and cars and things like that. Is that the, way, the best way to do it? But People go there for, for different reasons, to do different things. I think that if I was to go to the Antarctic, which I'm sure I will one day, it'll it'll be for, for something important. It'll be for some kind of scientific purpose and not just to be together fastest or to do it in a, in a new kind of way. And, and as an explorer yourself, you must view the achievement of someone like Edgar Evans very differently to people like us who haven't done the kind of scientific explorations that you've done. Uh, I mean, 
it is now much easier without wanting to diminish in any way your work or modern day explorers mm. the gear is just makes it so much easier doesn't it you've got sat nav you've got technical uh, backup equipment sat phones yeah i mean you can you can put yourself back to their kind of their days and not take sat nav and make sure you you pull your own pulks and and things like that but as has been shown by so many other people well when Helen Skelton went to do it, you saw her with the kites and pulling your own sled and stuff. And then the last episode was, oh, come and meet the rest of the team. There's these guys with these Toyota Hiace uh, pickup trucks and, and whatever else. So you can do it relatively easily, but you can make it difficult for yourself. But, you know, I, I always shy away from saying that I'm an explorer because I always see myself as a, an adventurer. And you can be an adventurer in your own back garden. You can go up into the, the Brecon Beacons and be an adventurer. Um, Exploring is, is relatively difficult these days. Um, there are, are relatively few frontiers left to, left to explore, but anyone can have an adventure on any day of the week. Hugh, good to see you. Thank you very Thank you much guys. indeed. Hugh James on uh, the life and times of the great Welsh explorer Edgar Evans. <laughs>